In this video, we will explore the concepts of SQL user roles and permissions and how they are crucial for managing access control and ensuring the security of your databases. Let's discuss why database security is of utmost importance. It helps protect sensitive data from unauthorized access, ensuring that confidential information remains secure. It ensures compliance with various regulatory requirements, avoiding potential legal and financial repercussions. Strong security measures can prevent costly data breaches and the risk of data loss, maintaining the integrity and confidentiality of your data. Let's explore the core concepts that underpin SQL security. The first concept is users. Database users are accounts that can connect to and interact with the database system. Each user has a unique identifier and authentication credentials, such as a username and password. The next concept is privileges. These are specific permissions granted to users that determine what actions they can perform on database objects. Examples of privileges include select, insert, update, and delete. Roles are named collections of privileges that can be assigned to users. They simplify security management by grouping related permissions together. The final concept is authentication. Authentication is the process of verifying the identity of users before granting access to the database system. Authentication methods include password authentication, certificates, and external services. Now let's delve into creating database users. These users represent individuals or applications that need to access your database. Each user account should have a unique identifier to distinguish them from other users. They should also have a strong password to prevent unauthorized access. They should have the minimum necessary privileges required for their role. Finally, clear ownership should be defined for each user account. Here are the examples of SQL code to create users. The first example shows how to create user in MySQL or Maria database. Create user, followed by the username. Here it is John at localhost, identified by followed by strong password. In PostgreSQL, create user followed by username John, with password followed by strong password. In SQL Server, the command is create login followed by username John, with password equals to strong password. Now let's discuss managing privileges. Privileges are the specific permissions granted to users that determine what actions they can perform on database objects. Here are some common privilege types. Select privilege allows users to read data from tables or views. Insert privilege allows users to add new data to tables. Update privilege allows users to modify existing data in tables. Delete privilege allows users to remove data from tables. Execute privilege allows users to run stored procedures or functions. All privileges grants all available permissions on a database object. Create privilege allows users to create new database objects, such as tables or views. References privilege allows users to create foreign key constraints that reference other tables. Here are some examples of granting and revoking privileges. To grant select, insert an update privilege on the employees table to the user HR underscore manager. The SQL code is grant select, insert, update on employees tohr underscore manager at localhost. To grant select on the employee ID, name and department from employees table to reporting user, the SQL code is grant select employee underscore ID name department on employees TO reporting underscore user at localhost. To revoke update permission on employees table from HR underscore assistant, the SQL code is revoke update on employees from HR underscore assistant at localhost. Let's explore creating and managing roles. Roles are collections of privileges that can be assigned to multiple users simplifying permission management and enhancing security. Here are the benefits of using roles. It simplifies privilege management by grouping related permissions together. It enforces the principle of least privilege by granting users only the necessary permissions. It facilitates access control auditing by providing a clear overview of who has access to what. 
it standardizes access across similar users by assigning them to the same role. Here are some example SQL code for role management. To create a role, the SQL code is create role reporting underscore role. To grant select privilege on the sales data table to the reporting role, the SQL code is grant select on sales underscore data to reporting underscore role. To assign the reporting role to a user, the SQL code is grant reporting underscore role to analyst at local host. To revoke the reporting role from a user, the SQL code is revoke reporting underscore role from temp underscore user at local host. Here is an example of role hierarchy in a company. On the top, we have database admin. They have all the privileges. Then we have the developer role and DBA role at the mid-level. The developer role can have junior dev and senior dev, each having limited and extended privileges respectively. DBA roles can have DBA read-only and DBA read-write having monitoring and configuration access respectively. At the bottom, we have a guest user with public data access only. Let's discuss row level security. Row level security, also called RLS, allows for fine-grained access control at the row level within a single table based on the user executing the query. Here are some key benefits of it. It enhances security by restricting data access based on the user context. It enforces data isolation in multi-tenant environments. It simplifies applications by moving security logic to the database. Here is an example in PostgreSQL. First, create a table called Customer Data with Columns ID, Customer ID, and Data. Then, enable row-level security with the command Alter Table Customer underscore Data Enable Row-Level Security. Then create a policy on Customer Data Table using the customer ID equals to current setting. Now let's dive into some security best practices. First is principle of least privilege. Grant users only the permissions they need to perform their job functions. Regularly review and revoke unnecessary privileges. The second is strong password policies. Enforce strong password requirements, regular password rotation, and secure password storage with salted hashes. The third is role-based access control. Use roles to group related permissions together for easier management. Assign users to roles based on job responsibilities. The fourth is regular security audits. Periodically review user accounts, roles, and permissions. Use database security audit tools to identify potential vulnerabilities. Fifth is data encryption. Encrypt sensitive data at rest and in transit. Use TLS or SSL for database connections and column-level encryption for sensitive information. The sixth is access logging and monitoring. Enable comprehensive logging for authentication attempts, privilege changes, and sensitive data access. Implement real-time monitoring and alerts. To summarize, let's revisit the key takeaways from this video. User management involves creating specific user accounts for different access needs with strong authentication. Never share credentials between users. The principle of least privilege dictates that you should grant only the minimum permissions necessary for users to perform their required tasks. Regularly review and adjust as needed. Role-based access control. Implement roles to simplify permission management, improve security, and ensure consistent access control across similar users. Regular auditing includes implementing comprehensive logging of database access and changes. Perform regular security audits to identify and address vulnerabilities. Effective database security is a continuous process that evolves with your organization's needs. If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Visit CodeLucky.com for more such useful content.